Believe the Impossible has already started and we're seeing lives change. And right around the corner is our big giving date on December 4th. Now, if you have been impacted by the ministry here at Authentic Church, you love this church, you love the teachings, you love the preachings, please help sow a seed on December 4th to help us impact the entire world. There's a lot more vision coming. In fact, I'm going to show you the new building that I believe that God is leading us to. And here's some more good news. If you feel like you're part of this church but you don't live in the area very soon we have plans to launch an online campus and this is all going to come together because of your faithful giving on december 4th so be part of this church serve at this church give at this church and let's believe that god can do the impossible Today is a big day as well. Today is our Giving Sunday for the Believing the Impossible vision. Come on, because we serve a supernatural God who is not limited to the natural world around us. We serve a God who can do the impossible. And sometimes God is going to speak in the middle of your trial, in the middle of everything feeling like it's falling apart. He's going to speak something really big over you and going to ask God, why? Why now are you telling me something like this? Because I don't know if you've seen my life lately, but everything's falling apart. God will give you a vision and a promise to give you hope to keep going. To understand that he truly is the God of the impossible. Nothing is too hard nor too big for him. So today is our Giving Sunday. And for many of us, we say, yes, I'm so excited. And to be honest with you, I bet there's some people here saying, oops, I think I came on the wrong day. It's Giving Sunday today. Is that today? Listen, you did not come on the wrong day. I cannot wait to share with you where I believe God is taking us. And I'm going to reveal to you today that I believe God has given us the blueprints of our brand new home. Okay. But it's going to take a lot of faith and it is going to take a miracle from God. But again, we serve a supernatural God, not limited by the natural world around us. Because let me make this statement very clear. When you believe God, you will be able to step into the promise that he has for your life. Let me say it again. When you believe God, when you trust him, no matter what your life has looked like, no matter what you have been through. God, it's been way too long. Is it true that the promise still stands for me today? Yes, the promise is still for you today. What did God uh, specifically speak over Joshua in the very beginning? Joshua chapter one, verse nine. God said, I love it that he said like this, this is my command. This is not a suggestion, okay? This is my command for you to do what? To be strong and be courageous. How are you strong and courageous? You're strong and courageous when you depend on the word of God. When you spend time in the presence of God and you hear his word and you know what's from the Lord, you're no longer scared of what's coming after you after that. So Joshua was strong and courageous because the Lord had spoken over him and God said, do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It doesn't matter how long it's been or how many times you failed or how many mistakes you have made. When the Lord speaks a promise over your life, you can get back up, you can follow him, and by faith, you will see that promise fulfilled in your life. That is the good God that we serve that he won't forsake you. He won't leave you just because you messed up one time. Like, okay, you said you wouldn't do it again. You did it again, all right? I'm done with you. God will never change his character. That's why it's so good that he's the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will never change his character. He will never leave you. His promises still stand. So listen to this, okay? It is never too late to believe in a promise from God. Because I want you to think about it from Joshua's point of view. Joshua, in his old age, had to lead the Israelites into the promised land and into battle. Let me say that again. Joshua was old, okay? I know when we hear the story, we automatically think, okay, he's young and he's, he's ready to go. No, Joshua was very old. How old was he? Well, we know that he died at the age of 110, okay? The young age of 110. Joshua chapter 24, verse 29. After this, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. It's believed that it took around 28 years for Joshua and the Israelites to conquer Canaan, the land of Canaan, the promised land, and divide it up among the tribes, meaning he was possibly around 82 years old when God told him to lead the Israelites into war into the promised land. Imagine that. 
And a lot of us are saying, God, I'm just too, too old to be used by you. It's, it's been too long. It's, it's been, there's no way that you could use somebody like me. Again, it does not matter how long it has been, how many mistakes you have made. The promises of God still stand for your life. But do you believe it when he speaks over you? We walk by faith. And Joshua was not alone in this. In fact, his comrade, Caleb, also believed, and he was 85 years old. Now, what I love about this, though, he was 85 years old, and he said this to Joshua. He said, you know what? I think it's time to take down the giants. He was serious. He said, I'm 85 years old. I still got my strength today like I did back then. It didn't go away. Why? Because my Lord has declared victory over me. He's declared this land for me. I'll take down the giants, and I'll conquer what the Lord has declared is mine. How did he have such confidence and faith? You want to know why? Because the Lord said so. That's it. Sometimes people are going to laugh at you and say, where did you get this crazy vision, this foolish vision? The Lord. Well, how do you know it's going to work? He said so. That's all I need. That is all I need. Because the Lord said so, he made it very clear. All I have to bring to the table is faith. Because the walls of Jericho fell because of what? Not by physical strength, but by faith. They believed that God could do it. So here's what Caleb said. I love this. Joshua chapter 14, verse 7 Caleb said, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to the scout the land of Canaan. And I brought a report back to him as it was in my heart. Verses 9 through 12. So Moses swore an oath to me on that day saying, be assured that the land on which your foot has walked will be your inheritance. I need you to understand this was so long ago and he never forgot it. Because what happened? The spies went into the land of Canaan. Moses sent them out. They came back only to believe Joshua and Caleb. Everybody else was afraid. So they had been wandering the desert now for 40 years. So did Joshua. Joshua wandered the desert for 40 years. He saw an entire generation of Israelites die. In fact, his leader, his commander, his chief died. Even Moses didn't make it into the promised land, but they still never forgot the word of God. So here's Caleb saying, you know what? I'm here. I'm ready. And let's continue. He said this. He said, be assured that the land on which your foot has walked will be in your inheritance to you and your children always. This is for me, my home, and the generations that come after me. This is what I believe the Lord is doing for my family. What is the promise that God has spoken over your family? Where have you been before that you said, God, take me out of this so that I can walk by faith and change my family lineage? I no longer want these curses to be passed down. And maybe it's addiction. Maybe it's abuse. Maybe it's lust. Maybe it's divorce. All these things. And you say, God, you know what? I'm coming to you. I'm running to you because I know what you have spoken over me. And my children, I want them to know you in an intimate way. So he followed the Lord completely. And now look, he said. The Lord has let me live. Just as he said those 45 years since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, when Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now he said, look at me. I like this. He said, look at me. I'm 85 years old. I ain't scared. (laughs) I'm not terrified. I'm not running away. He said, I'm still as strong today as I was the day Moses sent me. And my strength was then, so is my strength now for war, for going in and coming out. Now listen to the belief in his wording here. He said, so now give me this hill country. I love that. He said, I'm 85 years old. I know there's giants in the land. Give me my country. Give me my land because the Lord has spoken it. And I know that this is for me. He did not give up. Now he continues, for you heard on that day that the giant like and Akeem were there. The giants were in the city. It was a fortified city. And he said, perhaps the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out just as the Lord said so. Do not tell me that you are too gone. It is too late to believe in a promise from God. Because this encouraged me, let it encourage you today. When God calls you, the how is not up to you. And that's hard. Let's be honest with each other. That's very hard because even for me and the vision for this church, and I've I've heard the Lord clearly, I'm going to share that with you today. But I know where we're going. And so many times I'm like, God, but how? (laughs) Like, have you seen us today? Like, God, you've done so many blessings, but how do we get there? And I realized in my walk and faith that don't worry about the how. The how is God. The how is God. 
You just listen to the promises that he speaks over you and you bring what to the table? Again, what made the walls of Jericho fall? Faith, walking by faith. That's all you have to bring the, to the table and that's all God wants from you. Isn't that good? How do we please the Lord? Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. Without faith, no one can please God. You don't have to worry about the how. The how is God. You just bring faith to the, ca- to table, to the table and keep following the Lord and believe in what he has for you. But unfortunately, an Israelite family after seeing the miracles that God had already done from the victories over the Jordan River and the victory over the city of Jericho falling down, eventually there was an Israelite family that did not believe the Lord. They became greedy and they took for themselves instead of following him. And because they wanted their own personal gain, they almost brought destruction upon the whole nation of Israel. And what they did in private, God saw. Let me say that over here too. What they did in private, God saw. Okay, a lot of us look good from the outside. God wants your heart and he wants your private time. Too many Christians today praise God in public, but in private, serve the devil. Or in addictions and bondage and all these things that God has set you free from. I'm telling you today, Jesus is moving in your life because Jesus gave you a promise that he would set you free. That the spirit of God would set you free from these things. But listen, I need you to understand this because in the story, this is crucial. After that happened, they went into the next battle of AI and guess what? They lost the battle. In fact, it should have been an easy battle. It should have been an easy victory for them because they weren't that large. AI was not that big. In fact, the Israelites were kind of cocky and said, you know what? We don't even need to send all of our people. Just send some of them. We can take them out. We have this by our what? By our own strength. We do that a lot, don't we? And they were defeated by little AI. Listen, quickly they learned that without God, they can't even win the small battles. With God, you can win the big battles. With God, you can win the small battles. But they had to learn that even by their own strength, they can't even win the small battles in life. Right now, what battle are you facing? What are you dealing with on your own personal time that you feel like by your own strength you can't get over? But I'm telling you today, you can trust the Lord and what he's spoken over you. He can set you free. When you feel temptation coming, what do you do? You get in the word of God. You praise him. Have you ever noticed that when temptation knocks at your door, the last thing you want to do is be in the word of God? Right? Because we like to hear the temptation. Why? Because the devil is trying to bring you in. Our, even our own flesh is attracted to these things, okay? It's not always demons or the devil doing it. A lot of times it's our own flesh, our own bodies wanting these things. So by the spirit of God, we're led into his word and his word starts to set you free and change your mind and change everything about you. God doesn't want you to lose the battles because victory comes from the Lord. The walls of Jericho fell because of God. The Jordan River was parted because of God. Nothing they did on their own strength brought them victory, only by believing in God. But what did God warn them of that they didn't listen to? When they went into the city of Jericho to take it down, here's what happened. Joshua chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. God said, do not take any of these things set apart for destruction. Or you yourselves will be completely destroyed. Listen to that. Do not worship the ways of the world. Do not follow the ways of the world. Because if you rebel against me, listen, you will never step into the promise I have for you. If you want to control things on your own and bring others down, you'll bring down the entire nation. This is why it's so important to listen to the Lord, to follow him. And here's the good news. Because right now you may be surrounded by people that don't listen to the Lord. It could be your own family. It could be your workplace. You keep following God, and eventually those people are going to see the promises in your life being fulfilled over and over and over again. But listen to what the Lord said. This is very important. He said, everything, though, made from silver, from gold, from bronze, from iron that you see is sacred to the Lord and must be brought where? Into his treasury. Why? This is very important to understand that the first fruits belong to God, not you. The first fruits belong to God, not you. God, I give you my best and my first, and I believe that you will provide everything else that I need. Because so many times we think that all of our possessions give us worth. 
that if God, if I have this, if I have that, then I'll be happy. Then I'll be okay. So sometimes God allows us to get to a point in life where everything's taken away to realize that none of that even mattered. That didn't give you worth. Your money doesn't give you worth. Your status, your position doesn't give you worth. When you stand before God on that judgment day, the only thing that matters is your relationship with Christ. That is it. Only fulfillment that can come into your life should be with a relationship with Christ. And so God was making it very clear in the very beginning, I have handed you Jericho. So the first fruits belong to me. This is a tithe. First fruits in Hebrew, you know what it is? The Hebrew word is bikram, and it actually means this, a promise to come. I love that because there's only one who doesn't break his promises. Never broken a promise, never lied, never fell short, never. There's only one. So what God is saying, listen, give to me the first fruits, dedicate yourself to me, and every promise that I've spoken over your life will be fulfilled. I will protect you from the enemy and what he wants to do over you, how he wants to harm you and make you greedy and make you want the things of the world that will not satisfy you. He never breaks a promise. Proverbs chapter three, verse nine says it like this, honor the Lord with all of your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase, your wealth, so that what? Your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. And you may read that and say, well, I don't have a barn. <laughs> What does that mean for me? No, God is saying, listen, dedicate yourself to me. I'll provide everything that you need. Everything that you need. Maybe not everything you want. There's a difference there, but everything that you need. And it's in those moments you see the power of the true God that we serve today, that God, you're real and you love me. And and when I thought that I was about to crash and burn, you came in and did something supernatural that I can't explain because I didn't do it on my own strength. Only you did this for me. Listen, to give God your first and your best is to believe not only that he will provide everything that he said he would, but it's also the understanding that you are not the owner. You're the steward. This was a hard realization for me, and I've shared many times on this stage that even within ministry for the longest time, I would risk everything, look completely crazy in front of people, but when it came to my money, next time. God, when I have more, I'll I'll give it then. You never have more. And if you do have more, it's actually a bigger temptation because you're giving more, right? So it just keeps going and going and going. And so many times I made an excuse with God, God, I'll give you to what? To trust me? I don't know. I struggle. And it was at that moment in my life that I started to give to God first and say, God, this is all that I have, but I trust you. I kept seeing him supernaturally come in and do things that I still can't explain today. He provided for my family. I remember praying over a house and God just, just, what do we do? Because we move so much and coming out here on faith, you know, going to a bank and be like, hey, I like a loan. Now I've moved on faith, okay? And God told me to do this and everything just seemed crazy. And we get into this house and I remember that on the windowsill, there's a scripture and that scripture is, this is the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper. That was on the house that we have today. God put his signature on the blessing, said, this comes from me because you keep moving by faith. This is not just for pastors, it's for you too. This is the life that I want you to live, the life that I want you to see that God is good because you wanna know how dreams get killed? You wanna know how promises become lost? When you start to focus more on what others have instead of what Jesus has for you. That will always come to attack you every single time. God, but they have that. And and I want that over there. And how come you're blessing them more than me? How come they have a relationship? How come they have all these materials? God, what are you doing in my life? I'm working on your heart. Because you can have everything and not be saved. You can have all the possessions in the world. You can have a relationship that looks good from the outside, yet still be dying on the inside. Right? Just because you're breathing doesn't mean you're living. Let me say it like that. Right? So, So God wanted to make this important Reminder for his people that God is the one who wins every battle. And so judgment had to come upon this family. And once judgment was done upon the Israelites who stole, then it was God who led the Israelites back into Ai to see victory. God says, I'll fight your battles for you. Every big victory comes from me. Every small victory comes from me. Now, here's what I love. 
Listen to what God said this time. You ready? Joshua chapter eight, verse two. He said, you will do to Ai and its king the same thing you did to Jericho and his king. Only this time you can take all the what? You can take all the wealth for yourself, for your animals, keep it for yourself, and you will share the wealth with your people. Why? Because God doesn't care or need your possessions. But God does care about his possession over your heart, over who you're devoted to. You cannot be devoted to the world and to God. You'll serve one master, you'll hate the other. You'll become frustrated with one and, and you'll follow one. And, and God says, you listen, you can't be dark and light at the same time. You are meant to be light in the darkness wherever you go. Be devoted to me because listen, you will always lose the battle when you're more concerned about personal gain instead of gaining the kingdom of God. Even if you think it's small, even if you poke out your chest and say, I got this, that's, that's nothing. No, you'll find out you'll lose. When you're more concerned about personal gain than gaining the kingdom of God, let me also say it like this. If you're consumed by personal gain, you can also be consumed by a personal curse. And we see this out of the book of Malachi. Why? And, and a lot of times we get mad. We blame God. Well, God, how come you want all this for me? And how come you put me under a curse? And God's like, I didn't. I'm protecting you. Because the enemy wants any open door into your life to get a hold of you and make you only see the ways of the world. What I'm trying to do is protect you. But will you believe me and trust me when it's hard? When you have to give up something you think you need? I'm going to show you. God is saying that all you need is me. And after this, they won the battle of Ai. Awesome. Amazing. Everything should be perfect from here on. And it just keeps getting worse. I think I said that last week too. It's like every battle, every miracle they saw just kept escalating into something more, something more, something more. And now they see such a, a huge threat coming against them, such a large battle that it would be a battle of true faith to believe that God can do this. This is called the battle of the five kings, all right? The battle of the five kings. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Joshua chapter 10, five through seven. Joshua chapter 10, five through seven. And it says, the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon got together to come against Israel, okay? And come against Gibeon. Now, who is Gibeon? All right, let me, let me explain it like this. Because in the previous chapter, Gibeon was afraid of the Israelites. And so instead of siding with these five kings, they decided to trick the Israelites into a peace treaty. And what they did, they made themselves look dirty. They made themselves look like they came from a far off land. They allowed their food to get stale. And they came up to the Israelites and said, hey, look, we're from far, far away. Please don't hurt us. Save our lives. They tricked them. And if you read the text, here's what's really important to understand is that God would have revealed to the Israelites what they were doing but they did not ask God. And so because the Israelites did not ask God on what to do, they made the peace treaty with them and they gave them their word, okay, under oath before God that they would not hurt them and they took them as slaves. Well, guess what? Now Gibeon's got some troubles and guess who has to come out and save them? Israelites, because they did not require from the Lord. Listen, in every decision that you make, require an answer from the Lord. Because even when we think we can make the answer ourselves, usually for myself, I know I always make the wrong decision, okay? But I have to require of the Lord and listen to him. So you have these five kings now rising up and they're mad at Gibeon. So they gathered up together and went up with all their armies and they camped by Gibeon and fought against it. So the men of Gibeon now sent word to Joshua in the camp of Gigal saying, don't abandon your servants. Hey, remember us? We tricked you, but remember, you gave us a peace treaty. You have to come protect us now. Now everybody's coming up against us. They said, do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the five kings of the Amorites who live in the hill country have assembled against us. This is a Marvel Infinity War level threat, okay? That's just my own nerdy commentary coming on this scripture, all right? But this is a huge deal. I need you to understand that this is huge, They've seen miracles before. They've seen God do the impossible before, but now everybody is rising up against them. This is the largest battle they will fight here. And for some of you right now, that's exactly where you are. 
this battle that you thought would just go away, the battle maybe you weren't even prepared for, just keeps getting larger and larger and larger. And maybe right now you're confused or you're asking God, is the promise, does it still stand for me? Yes, when God speaks over your life, the promise still stands. The question is, will you keep walking by faith and believe? Will you step into what he has for you? What's the vision? What has God spoken over you? What is the vision? What do you see yourself in the end? The title of today's message is just that, Reaching the Vision. Because once they reached out to the Israelites, it says, So Joshua went up from Gilgal, and he and all the people war with him, and all the men of valor, and they were ready to go to battle. Why were they ready to go to battle? Because they had vision. They knew exactly what the Lord had spoken. They could see what God was doing. Listen, to have vision means that you're able to see the impossible. To have vision means that you're able to see the invisible before it becomes visible. To have vision means that you understand this is what God has spoken and it doesn't matter who comes up against me. But listen, if you don't believe the vision, you will not see the promise. Why? What does that mean? It means you'll give up. As soon as life gets hard, as soon as the battles come, as soon as they get too big and these trials come into your life that you didn't prepare for, then you'll just walk away. Why? Because you have no vision for the future. You feel like you have nothing to fight for. Right now, in your own life, what do you need vision for? Maybe it's your marriage. And you feel like your marriage is completely falling apart. Why? Because there's no vision for the future. There's no change. And when you feel like there's no change and there's no hope for the future, you feel stuck. And you feel like, I can just walk away. Very easy to do, right? In the culture that we live in today. What about your job? Maybe you just hate your job. Why? Because you have no vision for the future. You're not trying to better yourself or get to somewhere in life. Or maybe, maybe right now there's a passion in your life to do something big. And you know it's from the Lord. But every day you're like, no, never mind. I won't, I won't do it. I'm not going to try. Why? Because I'll look foolish. People will make fun of me. I'm just going to stay where I am. Listen, I've noticed in my life the biggest failures are just never trying. Because that will haunt you forever. I mean, if you tried something and failed, at least you tried and you know. But for many of us, we're always going to say, what if, what if, what if. I don't want to say what if. Especially when God declares it over our lives. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 says, where there is no vision, the people what? They perish. They don't thrive. So here's what I want to do for the remainder of the sermon. I'm going to teach you three points on how to follow a vision from God, to believe God for the impossible, and I'm going to show you some pictures of what I believe is our future building. You ready for that? Come on, come on. All right. We believe God for the impossible. Point number one is this. Again, you have to see the vision to reach the impossible. You have to see the invisible in order for it to become visible in your life. What was the vision that God gave Joshua in the very beginning? Joshua chapter 1, verse 3 through 5. He also said this, I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on the land I have given you. Again, notice that every time God speaks, he speaks in past tense. I've already given you this land. I've already given you the kings, the battle, the victory. Everything is yours. Why? Because I, the Lord, am fighting this victory or this battle for you. And he said, from the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. And I will not fail you or abandon you. God will not fail you. He will not abandon you. He is with you always, always. He wants to fight the battles that come after you so that you can see his glory and his power. But you can't give up. Be in his word if you feel like you're being tempted to give up or walk away. Worship his holy name even when you don't feel like it. Because that's your dedication to the Lord. Lord, I give you my best, even when my best doesn't look good, right? But I trust you and I praise your holy name. This was the vision that Joshua had, and he held on to it even before he entered into one battle. So what do you do with the vision from God? 
When you know that God has spoken clearly over your life, what do you do with it? And I'll preach this over and over and over again. You write it down. Write down what the Lord has spoken over you and where you are in life. I love that. Because a lot of times I have this journal in my office and I've written down all these statements from the Lord that I believe that he has spoken over me that I have already seen come to pass. And then I'll also write where I was in life and nothing makes sense. I'll notice that in my environment, everything's falling apart and, and you know, this isn't working out and I don't know how to do this. Yet God still said this. And then fast forward, God did this. No matter how I felt or what I was dealing with at the time, because again, when God speaks, the promise will always come. Write it down. Habakkuk chapter two, verses two through three says it like this. Then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. For this vision is for a future time. It describes the end. It will be fulfilled. It may seem, it may seem slow in coming, but wait patiently. Let me say that again. It may seem slow in coming, but wait patiently on the Lord. Because if you get ahead of God, what happens? You rush the process. You get ahead of him, you start to mess up what he has for you. God's perfect timing brings a perfect blessing. Just trust him what he has for you, okay? So wait, be patient, for it will surely take place and it will not be delayed. Always the perfect timing. And so right now, what, what vision do you have over your life? And maybe it's a business, right? And you're saying, but God, how is that gonna honor you? Maybe God wants to bless you in a business idea so that you could bless the churches around you or bless the community around you or be able to give and, and help others during Christmas time who need clothes or maybe families that are struggling getting toys for their children. And all of a sudden, God has blessed you to do what? To bless others. Have you ever noticed throughout the scripture that every time God gets a miracle, it's a blessing on them, but it also blesses others around them? The blessings just keep overflowing. In fact, every time you see that, every time you see a promise of God, it says it's, the blessings overflow. Why? Because it's not just for you. But the goodness and the grace and the love of God continue to reach more people than you can even imagine. All you have to do is walk by faith. That's it, right? Or maybe you're praying to God, God, I have this vision to change my family. Maybe nobody else is a believer in your family. And you're praying for them and you're like, God, but can I really do it? Listen, I've seen Somebody come out of a family of non-believers and I have baptized almost every one of their family members now. I've seen it. God can do that in your life, but it starts with a vision. And it may be hard. They may make fun of you. They may look at you like you're dumb and, and call you names. It doesn't matter. God can still use you. Maybe there's a burden on your heart to preach. Maybe it's to speak. You got something heavy on you and you're like, God, but I can't even talk. <laughs> like, like, what do you want me to do? I remember my first time preaching, and my wife was in here in the first service. She was cracking up because she remembers this day very clearly. My first time preaching, I was preaching to a youth group in, in Texas, and I was so nervous. And I remember bringing like a stack of papers, okay? And that was my sermon. And I put it on the podium, and as soon as I put it on the podium, they fell all over the floor. And I said, well, I don't need that. I'm good. I, I needed that. I should have like grabbed every paper on the floor at that moment. And then I started to get so nervous. I started to sweat. And I kid you not, I started to gag. And I was like, God, look, God, look. Like it just was so bad that a lady from the congregation brought me water and said, you poor child, God bless you. And I, I said, God, what are you doing? Like, this is a true story. That's how nervous I was. God spoke this over me. You know, it wasn't a year until I actually preached again. Because God was showing me, listen, I've spoken this over you. You can't do it by your own strength, though. And I'm going to keep working in your heart, working in your life. And you're going to take that step of faith again. And each time you're going to see more improvement, more improvement. And you're going to see my power in your life. The same is for you. Do not give up just because you failed one time. Right? Learn from it. Keep moving forward and trust the Lord and allow a testimony to come into your life so strong that all you can say is, well, God changed me because you don't know who I used to be. I didn't have this gift before. God has supplied the gift. Do not give up on that. And we know today because it's the spirit of God living inside of us, his Holy Spirit is inside of us. Our bodies are a temple, meaning the spirit of God is in us. And we see these revelations increased in our life, meaning you can hear the voice of the Lord. He'll speak to you. He'll give you heavy burdens. He'll show you things over and over again. In Acts chapter 2, verse 17, it says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my what? My spirit 
upon all people who believe in Christ, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Listen, God will give you a dream so clear that it becomes impossible to doubt the impossible with God. I've seen it over and over again. God will give you a dream or a vision so clear it becomes impossible to doubt what he has spoken over you. Joshua never gave up. Even after he saw all the trials, all the deaths, all the, all the years waiting and waiting on the Lord, he never gave up. In fact, he always believed despite the opposition. In Joshua chapter 11, verse 15, it says it like this. As the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, so did Moses command Joshua. And so did Joshua. And Joshua left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. Why? Because he always believed in the word of the Lord. His environment didn't matter. Even if he had to walk that journey alone, he would have listened to the Lord, he would have done the will of the Lord, and he would have stepped into the promise and the blessing that he had for him. The same is for you. The same is for you. So what do you do with the vision? You write it down. I want to share this with you. I, I remember being in my office, and I just felt this, this pressing on my heart, God saying, put the building on the wall in my office and pray over it and declare it to be yours. And I said, cool. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> like, all right, what do I do? Because I had nothing. And I didn't understand this. This actually kind of confused me for a little while because I'm like, God, do you want me to draw a picture? But I just felt like this, this burden over and over again, like pray over the building, what I have for you where you are going, okay, and claim it. And I just didn't know how to do that by his word because I had nothing to look at. But then one of our elders reached out. And he says, listen, I, ha I have something I want to share with you. I've had this dream. And he gets more into the story. And so we have an elders meeting. And he says, listen, I've had dreams back to back since 2015. In fact, he shared with me that he's had seven dreams all together, which is funny because seven is the number of completion out of the Bible. And he says in 2015, he saw himself in this very large building, almost in the back, like it's a warehouse, and he was packaging up something, and he was sending these things all over, all over the country and possibly all over the world, okay? But he didn't know where he was because, of course, Authentic Church was not established back then, and he said, all of a sudden, the dream started reoccurring. Now, in this year, in 2022, and he was back in the same spot, the same building. Everything was the same, except this time he knew that he was in Authentic Church. And he was preparing something to ship out, but he said he looked at the building, and it was completely empty. It was gutted. It was just an empty shell. But he saw some specific things that I want to share with you today. Don't show pictures yet. But he saw in this, in this dream that there was a red sofa just chilling in the middle of the building, okay? So he saw that, and then he said he woke up and went back to sleep. Now, if you guys don't remember me preaching this before, that is called what I believe is the law of the double dream. And a lot of times throughout Scripture, especially in the Old Testament, you'll see somebody have a dream. They'll wake up, go back to sleep, and all of a sudden they have that dream again. God is confirming, hey, this is important. Like, listen to me. Two means fact out of the Bible. Okay, I want you to recognize that this is something important for your life. In fact, when, when Pharaoh had the dream, uh, the vision, he had it twice. And he woke up from that dream, went back to the dream. Genesis 41, verse 32. And the dream was repeated by Pharaoh twice because this thing is established by God. God was getting his attention and making it known. This is what I have for you. Okay, so our elders said he went back to sleep. And when he did, he was in the same building, but this time the construction, the renovations were almost done. And he saw what it looked like. In fact, he actually printed out blueprints of how the layout of the inside of the building was. And then when he woke up, he said he just had this instinct already that he knew where this building was. And he said it was the old Kroger building off Highway 70. I want to show you the building right now. Big building, all right? This is the building that's been sitting there. Now, he, he said he has not been there for the last five to six years, okay? So he went up to the window just to look in there and pray. God, what are you doing? This is for us. You know what he saw? Go ahead and show the red sofa. Exactly like his dream. He saw this red sofa. He saw this empty shell of a building. And then here's what gave me chills. He went up to the door, and to this day, this sign is on the door by the owners of the building right now. I'm just going to read the ending of it. It says, we dedicate this building to you, to God. 
and ask that you will bless it for generations to come. All the praise is given to you, God, first in all we do. Chills. I mean, chills. Come on, we can clap for that. Come on. Like, he hasn't been to this building in five or six years. He has this dream reoccurring since 2015 to now, and he's sharing this with us, and I remember his face, and I love it when you speak by faith because sometimes you're looking around like, um, do y'all believe me? <laughs> like, do I look loony to you today, you know? And I know because I've seen visions, I've seen dreams. Other people in this church have come up to me and shared with me what they have seen over and over again. And so God kept doing more and more. So let me also share this. Now, when he came to that meeting, he had it printed out. Here's the building. What, a, what has God been placing on my heart? Put the building on the wall, pray over it. I put the building on the wall, I pray over it. I hear this word, we'll become a destination spot for the world to travel to. That's what I heard. That's already happening on a lower scale. We have people traveling every Sunday, four, even possibly six hours away to be in this church. We have people that have flown in from different states in the country, even somebody about to fly in from Paris to be baptized here. In fact, I just found out this weekend that our podcast is in the top 1% of shared podcasts all over the world, (laughs) preaching the gospel of Jesus. Why? Because God wins victories. He wins battles, small victories, big victories. It's all because of God. God is doing this and he's blessing this house. And so I put it on the wall and I believe this statement. And then God says, I I, I promise you, I felt this. Go to the building now. Pray over it. Allow me to open up doors. So I grab Pastor Felix. I get Mr. Eric back there, Elder Eric. And we, we go to the building and guess what? The door was actually open. Well, looky, looky, you know, (laughs) what's going on? And the owners were there taking the red couch and getting some of the junk out. And they allowed us to walk through the entire building. And here's what he said to me. He says, you know what? I've always wanted this building to become a church. And it just gave me chills. Looking at this huge building, God, but how? With what we have right now in our size, God, how? And God just kept reminding me over and over again, I am the how. You want to see walls fall? Move by faith. You want to see miracles in your life? Move by faith. In fact, look crazy in front of everybody and declare my promises and watch the testimony that will be seen here in Hickory, North Carolina, all over the world. The impact that God makes when you move by faith. Let me get to my second point. You ready? Point number two is this. God will give you confirmation to believe the impossible. God was sending us confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. This isn't crazy, even though it may seem impossible to you. What is faith? Let me ask you this question. What is faith? Faith is believing the word of God over your own thoughts and feelings. And I love that. Why? Because your feelings will have you all over the place. Let's be honest. One day you're full of belief. The next day your mind is being attacked by doubt. Nothing's going to work. And then the other day you were like, everything's going to work. You know, you're back and forth. One day you're content. And the next day you feel like you don't have enough. God, I need more. There's no way. I remember just, just even with this building, seeing it and believing God. And the third day, fourth day, I'm like, how God, how? And God says, listen, I got you. Just believe because feelings will have you all over the place. Listen, this is how God spoke confirmation over Joshua. The five kings are rising up. These people are coming into battle. It looks like there's no way they can win. But listen to what the Lord spoke to Joshua in Joshua chapter 10, which, by the way, is an important chapter because we see one of the most supernatural miracles of God never seen before. Okay, Joshua chapter 10, verse 8. God says, do not be afraid of them. The Lord said to Joshua, for I have given you victory over them. Again, God is speaking in past tense. I have given you victory. Not a single one of them will be able to stand up to you. So what happened? Joshua hears confirmation from the Lord. And then because he moved by faith, believing that God was the how, all of a sudden he saw physical confirmations in front of his eyes. Who won the battle? Let me show you how the battle was won. Joshua chapter 10, verse 9 through 11. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, talking about the enemy, the five kings, surprising them by marching uphill all night from Gilgal. And the Lord calls them to panic and be confused before Israel. Who calls the enemy to be confused and panic? The Lord. The Lord did this. And because of that, Joshua and the Israelites struck them dead in a great slaughter in Gibeon. 
and chased them along the way that goes to Beth Haran and struck them as far as Ezekiah and Machida, and they fled before Israel while they were at the, the descent of Beth Haran. Now listen to this. Then the Lord threw down large stones of hell from heaven on them, on the enemies, as far as Ezekiah, and they died, and more Amorites died because of the hell storms. Let me say that again. More Amorites died because of what God did than those whom the sons of Israel killed with the sword. Who wins the battles? God wins the battles. Every battle, big or small, God will speak confirmation. And when you move by faith, you will start to see physical confirmation. So if that gave you chills, here's more of the story. And, and, and all of his dreams are recorded. He has everything typed out. And in his dream, this is what gave me chills and almost made me cry at the table. He said, in 2015, he had this dream that he was packaging something and sending it out. In 2022, he saw what it was. Let me just say it like this. There's only two people in this church that know that I've had plans to write a book. And if you remember, at the start of this series, I told you not only am I teaching it, we're living it out. The book is Believe the Impossible, a story of faith for our church and where we're going as we are going there because I want it to be a testimony for the world. I keep believing even before you see it. It's one thing to write a book at the end of the process. I want to write it during the process. Nobody else knows about this besides my wife and one other pastor here. In his dream, it's recorded. He literally said, I was preparing books to be sent all over the country, possibly the world, and the book was titled, it was imprinted on my heart, he said, Believe the Impossible. And it was just that confirmation for me personally at the time, like, and I looked at him and was like, did anybody tell you this? He said, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, Nobody knows about this. Nobody knows. God can make secret conversations come to life before you to show that he is in control and doing things that you cannot on your own. Do not be afraid just because you don't see the miracle today. Do not be afraid of the battle just because it seems too hard or too much for you to handle. It could be, but it's not too much for God to handle. And God will handle that battle for you and keep delivering you and believing and, and, and allowing us to believe in his promises. And so it just gave me chills. And so my last point for you today is this. Nothing is impossible for God. I'm gonna declare that loud here on stage for this church. Nothing is impossible for my God to do. Because in Joshua chapter 10, like I said, one of the most famous supernatural miracles of all time took place. Joshua 10, 12 through 14. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord on the day when the Lord handed over the Amorites to the sons of Israel. And Joshua said in the sight of Israel, son, stand still at Gibeon. I want you to notice this because a lot of us would do something like this. God, you said to do what? Tell the sun to be still. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me go back here. God, can you make the sun be still very much and, and, and come back out here when nobody hears you? In secret. What did Joshua do? Right in front of the army, in the middle of battle, he said, sun, stand still. Why? Because he believed that God could do it because he knew that God was winning the battle for them. Sun stand still at Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. And so the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation of Israel took vengeance upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the middle of the sky and was in no hurry to go down for about a whole day. And there has not been a day like that before it and after it. Joshua risked looking very crazy in front of everybody. Spoke something insane out loud. Sun, stand still. How did he have such a faith? Or such faith to do such thing. Because Joshua has seen miracle after miracle. Crossing the Jordan River, God parted that. The walls of Jericho falling down, God did that. By walking by faith, God allowed them to have victory over the city of Ai. God allowed the Red Sea to be parted. God allowed them to go through the wilderness and be provided for and protected, even though other people messed up and griped and complained. Joshua knew as long as he believed the Lord and followed the Lord, God would never give up on him. And even when there's two left, those two who believe will be able to stand in, in the promise, declaring what God had for them. And the same is for you. Again, what is the vision that God has given you that seems impossible? 
You want to see your family change? Believe God for the impossible. Start praying together. Start believing together. Like I said earlier, instead of fighting with each other and letting go, maybe it's time to grab a hand and say, you know what? Be honest, maybe you don't like me right now. But let's be in the Word together and see our hearts change. Let's see what God can do because I know the vision the Lord has for me. And it's good. Don't give up on the vision. Don't give up on the vision. Joshua saw miracle after miracle after miracle. And I've seen what my God can do. You know, not that long ago, I was in a backyard doing Facebook Live preaching. And this seemed impossible to where we are today. And every step of the way God has provided, he's never forsaken me, he's never let us down. He continues to bless, he continues to reach, he continues to move. And so right now, I want to share the vision with you. Share this picture of what I believe will be the future of Authentic Church House. Come on. Give God some praise. Will it take a miracle? Yes. Does it sound crazy today? Yes. So let me say it on stage. This building, just to buy it, will cost us $2.3 billion. But my God is able. And if he has spoken it, if he has confirmed it, if he has sent us dream after dream after dream, because I've had dreams and I've had visions, my wife has had dreams and visions. There's been people that have come up to me within this church. Pastor, I don't even know about this building, but I had a dream about it. Pastor, I've seen this vision over the church. I know where God is leading us. People are being drawn here, not because of what we're doing, but because we're marching by faith, because we're believing in the miracles of God. So again, watch this become a testimony to the world. Here's what I believe. Because it's not just the building that makes an impact. I believe that for us, God is going to allow us to reach the kingdom of God. It will begin to grow. Our youth ministry will grow. I want to see a section just for our youth ministry to grow and become what it should be fully in the future, allowing students to rise up to become leaders. I want to see our children's ministry grow. I want to seem like a theme park for our kids to be excited to come to, to praise Jesus, to raise, be raised up, to change the culture around them. We want to see our staff grow so that we can effectively reach more needs and more people for Christ. I want to see a studio that we're going to create film to honor God. In fact, listen, we're about to launch an online campus very soon because we have people all over the world that want to be a part of this place that don't live in the area. And so very soon we're going to have an online campus where they can serve and actually be a part of this church here. Come on. From any place in the world, even connect groups, will be able to be a part of that. That is in the working right now. And here's what I'll, I'll say, I told you, we'll become a destination spot for the world to, to travel to. And the elders dream, he said this, he said the church will be able to sit or seat 1,500 to 2,000 people. And it will also be a place for conferences to be held for attendees to come from all over the United States and the world. We will not bend the culture, but we will change the culture in the kingdom of God. Because again, my God is able he will provide. And I'm asking you, again, you may look at me like you're a crazy pastor. I just believe the Lord. And I believe that nothing is too big for him. Nothing is too crazy. And I want the same for you too. Hey guys, this is Pastor Bobby Chandler, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's message. We pray that it blessed your life, but do me a favor, before you just click off of YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel, and also ring that bell so that you get notifications on the next sermon or any announcements that we have going on. I also want to say thank you for being a faithful partner with Authentic Church, because of your giving, we are able to bless and impact the people around us every single week. So, we love our Authentic family, and thank you today for joining us.